Hi, this is Dr. Perry Carpenter. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to join me on today's video. On today's video, we're discussing chiropractic orthopedic update regarding knee injuries and knee instability syndromes. And I have a brief discussion for you today, which is going to focus on the medial collateral ligament. And we're going to sharpen our clinical and physical examination skills in the assessment of ligamentous injuries whether those be mild, moderate, or severe, of the medial collateral ligament. And in follow-up sessions to today's discussion, we're going to investigate, of course, the other ligaments that contribute to the stability of the knee, including the lateral collateral ligament, the anterior cruciate ligament, and the posterior cruciate ligament. Now, today's reference uh, is, uh, consists of a classic study reported in the British Journal of Sports Medicine in 2000, wherein they talked about isolated ligamentous injuries and complex, meaning multiple ligamentous injuries that occur simultaneously. And the conclusion of this study, which is included today for your uh, reference, uh, the conclusion of this study was that because most mechanisms of knee injuries involve a rotational component, and I want you to think of uh, an athlete uh, planting the foot and pivoting around that foot while getting uh, struck by uh, an opponent or an offender or a defender on the lateral aspect of the knee as an example of a rotatory component of the mechanism of injury. Because most mechanisms of injuries to the knees involve some component of a rotational force or a rotational vector, isolated injuries to any of the four structural ligaments is rare. More common is complex injury involving one or more of the four ligaments that surround the knee. So we're going to talk today about uh, isolated injury to the medial collateral ligament, although I will add in at the end uh, some physical examination maneuvers to help you assess for a complex or a rotational or a multiple ligamentous injury situation in your particular patient. Okay. So let's talk uh, briefly about the knee, the stability of the knee. The stability of the knee is maintained by several structures. Now, the osseous restraints of the knee uh, are weak and are shallow. The osseous restraints of the knee is based upon the shapes of the femoral condyles. That's the medial femoral condyle, the lateral femoral condyle, and then also the tibial plateaus, the medial tibial plateau, and the lateral tibial plateau. So because this, the femoral condyles to the tibial plateaus uh, represents shallow joint surfaces, there's not a lot of osseous restraint provided by the osseous structures themselves. Now fortunately the osseous structures themselves are reinforced and, um, reinforced and uh, fortified by the medial and lateral menisci. The medial and lateral menisci deepen the joint surfaces and allow for a deeper support of the femoral condyles on the medial and lateral tibial plateaus. But just considering the osseous structures uh, in the femoral condyles and the tibial plateaus, they don't provide a lot of osseous support to resist lateral forces, to resist medial forces, to resist hyperflexion forces, or to resist hyperextension forces. So fortunately, in addition to the osseous restraints, we have the passive supports, which consists of the medial collateral ligament, the lateral collateral ligament, and the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments, as well as some other structures, including the iliotibial band and both the postural medial and the postural lateral joint capsules. We'll talk more about the joint capsules and some other supportive structures as well here in a couple minutes. And then in addition to the passive restraints, the knee is also stabilized by some dynamic stabilizing structures, which consists of the muscles and their tendons, which cross the knee joint. So when you think of the muscles and tendons that cross the knee joint, you have the quadriceps that cross the knee joint, you have the medial and lateral biceps or hamstring muscles, consisting of the biceps femoris laterally, and then both the semimembranosus and semitendinosus medial. Excuse me there. And then also some additional muscles, including the sartorius, the gracilis, 
and then from below to above consisting also of the gastrocnemius muscle okay so those are the main structures that contribute to stability uh, and resist excessive motions around the knee so let's focus in here on the medial collateral ligament okay so here is the medial collateral ligament and we're looking at here this is an oblique view of the left knee uh, the patella would be somewhere here out in the front so you're looking at uh, the left knee sort of uh, medial obliquely and the medial collateral ligament has two components it has a superficial component and a deep component and the origin of the medial collateral ligament is on the medial femoral condyle which is depicted right in this region here there's the superficial uh, medial collateral ligament origin and then here is the origin of the deep medial collateral ligament and then the insertion is on the tibial metaphysis approximately four to five centimeters distal to the medial joint line beneath the pes anserinus insertion so we can trace the medial collateral ligament down Here's the medial tibial plateau here. So you can see that the cruciate ligament crosses the joint line to attach four to five centimeters distally uh, on the tibial metaphysis. So if we uh, dissect away and peel away the superficial medial collateral ligament, then we get a look here at the deep medial collateral ligament and the deep medial collateral ligament is interesting because it attaches on the medial meniscus here so that the superior portion is referred to as the meniscofemoral portion the inferior portion is the meniscotibial portion and there's strong adherence and, and congruence and confluence of the medial collateral ligament here with the medial meniscus and this explains the reason why with uh, injury to the medial collateral ligament uh, many times there is simultaneous or concomitant injury to the medial meniscus as these uh, central fibers here get pulled away and create an avulsion and a tear in the medial meniscus okay so that's the superficial and the deep medial collateral ligaments now in addition to those two components of the medial collateral ligament providing for uh, medial stabilization in other words stabilization against valgus directed forces in this direction there's a couple other structures that contribute as well uh, which include the posterior oblique ligament posterior oblique ligament which is indicated here by this capsular thickening of this structure in through here uh, posteriorly and obliquely uh, centrally located to the medial collateral ligament and then also the postural medial joint capsule all depicted in here by this structure in through here so this is your medial ligamentous complex that provides for uh, passive restraint against valgus directed forces so the posterior oblique ligament and the medial capsular ligament form what's referred to as the medial ligament complex and these are going to be responsible for resisting valgus forces when the knee is in full extension but as the knee goes through progressively increasing angulations in flexion those two structures the posterior oblique ligament and the medial capsular ligament are going to relax and thereafter the primary responsibility for medial restraint will reside with the medial collateral ligament so knowing this uh, this anatomic feature this uh, gives us some direction and some instruction as to how to coordinate our physical examination procedures in order to differentially test uh, the medial ligament complex versus the medial collateral ligament so to test the medial collateral ligament itself in isolation we're going to have the knee flexed to 20 to 30 degrees to test the medial ligament complex we're going to test the knee in full extension 
Now, all of these structures, including the medial collateral ligament, the posterior oblique ligament, and the medial capsular ligament, they all synergistically work to resist abnormal tibial internal rotation. So using this as our representative uh, knee, this is the posterior aspect of the left knee here, this, uh, all of these ligaments, the medial collateral ligament, posterior oblique, and the medial capsular ligament, would resist tibial internal rotation forces, which in this diagram would be clockwise rotation of the tibia, and also would resist counterclockwise external rotation forces uh, at, the, at the femur. So typically in sports, we see uh, an examinee who has a planted foot, which then involves some pivoting or rotational component, typically with an external rotation force at the femur and that's going to compromise the structural integrity of this entire medial collateral ligament complex especially with the knee in full extension now isolated injury to the medial collateral ligament is going to occur similarly but because the posterior oblique and the medial capsular ligament relax when the knee is in approximately 20 to 30 degrees of flexion the uh, medial collateral ligament is taut and is responsible for the entirety of the val uh, valgus restraint. So when the knee is slightly flexed and there's a lateral valgus directed force to the knee, this is going to cause isolated injury to the medial collateral ligament. And when the deforming force includes a rotational component such as the uh, athlete pivoting or uh, executing a change of direction, then we're going to see uh, injuries to also the posterior oblique ligament, also to the medial cap capsular ligament here. And then in addition, because both of the cruciate ligaments here also contribute to resisting rotational forces at the knee, this is where we're going to see the complex and co-occurring injuries also to either the anterior or the posterior cruciate ligaments. And so in this situation, we're going to see injury to both the collaterals, collateral ligament and the cruciate ligament. And you've seen these diagrams before in your orthopedic textbooks referring to the unhappy triad, which involves injury here to the medial collateral ligament, injury here to the medial meniscus, and typically involves injury to the anterior cruciate ligament here, but could just as easily involve injury to the posterior cruciate ligament or both of the cruciate ligaments. That's referred to in the literature as the classic unhappy triad. On physical examination, you're gonna find some characteristic findings for injury to the medial collateral ligament. There'll be a localized bruised and possibly swelling on the medial joint line uh, uh, of the knee, possibly extending uh, posteriorly around towards the back of the knee. There'll be localized tenderness to palpation of the medial knee, both above and below the joint line, probably with greatest point tenderness right at the joint line if involvement of the deep component of the medial collateral ligament. And then with provocative testing, we're going to apply a valgus force to the knee with the knee flexed in approximately 15 to 20 degrees of flexion. This is to isolate the medial collateral ligament, which is most taut in this position. And in this position, the posterior oblique and medial cap capsular ligament is going to be least taut. So it's the 15 to 20 degrees of flexion that isolates uh, both the superficial and deep component of the medial collateral ligament. So with a valgus directed force, if you observe a medial joint opening greater than five millimeters, this is gonna indicate substantial, substantial structural damage to the medial collateral ligament. Now the examinee may not have five millimeters of medial joint opening, but a report of pain with a valgus directed force would also uh, be a positive objective finding
for structural damage to the medial collateral ligament. Now, with the knee is in, when the knee is in full extension, when the knee is in full extension, we're in testing the entirety of the medial ligament complex, including the medial collateral ligament, the posterior oblique ligament, and the medial capsular ligament. And so, excessive opening in in the medial direction to a valgus directed force with the knee in full extension indicates combined or complex injury uh, to all of these structures with also the all strong possibility of an additional injury to either the anterior or the posterior cruciate ligament. So these uh, injuries with the knee in full extension uh, typically and especially when uh, accompanied by a rotational component uh, seem to create the greatest uh, severity of injury to both the collaterals and the cruciate ligaments. So again, injury to the medial collateral ligament is rare in isolation, so rarely do we see an isolated injury purely to the medial collateral ligament itself. It's more commonly associated with an anterior cruciate or posterior cruciate ligament. This is what we refer to as the complex ligamentous injury, in which case uh, there's injury to both the collateral and the cruciate ligaments. Now, injury to the medial collateral ligament can occur with and without postural medial rotatory instability. When there is postural medial rotatory instability, that tells us that there's also damage to the medial ligament complex, including the medial capsular ligament and the posterior oblique ligament. So when there is uh, no postural medial rotatory instability, typically this uh, patient can be managed conservatively. If the patient fails to respond to conservative measures, the orthopedic uh, procedure to correct the postural medial rotatory instability involves a surgical proximal advancement of the torn and or ruptured medial collateral ligament. When there is postural medial rotatory instability, this tells us that the injury is of a greater severity and involves additional structures, typically requiring uh, a reconstruction of the posterior oblique ligament with a grafting procedure from the hamstring tendon, which would be uh, from the tendon of the uh, adjacent semi-tendinosus hamstring muscle, the medial hamstring muscle. Okay, and then uh, what about cases uh, that involve chronic pain and chronic recurrent instability injury to the medial knee? With chronic instability of the knee or multiple injuries to the medial collateral ligament, there's a pathognomonic diagnostic x-ray imaging finding that will tell you that this examinee has suffered injury to the medial collateral ligament in the past. And this is what's referred to as the Pellegrini steata lesion. Pellegrini steata lesion. So this is sometimes useful in medical legal context to document and authenticate examinees' reports of injuries to their knee. So the Pellegrini steata lesion is an ossified post-traumatic lesion. It's located at or near the medial femoral, uh, the medial fem the medial collateral ligament uh, near the medial femoral condyle here adjacent to the margin of the medial femoral condyle. Let's say that again. It's at the medial collateral ligament adjacent to the margin of the medial femoral condyle. So here's the medial femoral condyle. We said that the medial collateral ligament has its origin here at the medial femoral condyle and then projects distally to a point on the distal tibial metaphysis right about here, four to five centimeters distal to the joint line. So one presumed mechanism of injury is an avulsion fracture. It's an avulsion injury of the medial collateral ligament here at the medial femoral condyle, which then later becomes ossified and is generally tenderness, tender to palpation on physical examination. And most studies seem to indicate that this calcification usually begins to form a few weeks after the injury. 
So this can be uh, diagnostic study evidence uh, and x-ray evidence of an injury to the medial collateral ligament that involves uh, an avulsion of the ligament away from its origin here uh, on the medial femoral condyle. And, and many times this has to, this is, this requires a surgical reconstruction in cases of complete avulsion uh, from the medial femoral condyle. Okay, doctors. So this is an orthopedic chiropractic review of knee injuries and knee instability syndromes focused on the medial collateral ligament. And in our next discussion, we'll go around to the other side of the knee and talk a bit about the lateral collateral ligament over here. For now, this is Dr. Perry Carpenter wishing you best of success.